first ever meeting between Oregon and South Carolina. And we are underway with the Gamecocks controlling the opening tip. They are a very methodical team. They're 354 in tempo. They're going to play half court. They're going to run very little, only when they get a steal. South Carolina lost in the SEC quarterfinals to Auburn. They were blown out, 86-55. to 55. See how they bounce back today with the shot clock at one. And B.J. Mack is rejected by Kwame Evans. I mean, they have a pretty, besides in Folly Dante, Kwame Evans is 6'10". Here is Jackson Shelstad for three. This kid all rookie in the Pac-12 this year. And here's that one 2 2 press that Dane Altman likes to use. Shellstad, 34% from the three-point line. Going to be a star. A member of the Pac-12 all-freshman team. And here's that zone. They went to it really early in this game. Speaking of talented freshman, Colin Murray Boyles is on a tear right now for the Gamecocks. This one tipped around into the arms of Jadrian Tracy. And that was a great job by South Carolina. They flashed B.J. Mack to the elbow, got the guy inside Davis, wasn't able to finish. And a turnover as Jermaine Kuznard could not connect on the pass. That's one of the underlying storylines in this game is Kuznard who spent three seasons and a redshirt year at South Carolina. And when Frank Martin was fired, he transferred to Oregon. Going against his former team. And now you see this is a matchup zone. Everybody's got a guy. They're pointing, being very active. That's where you got to get the ball. They've got it there twice. Murray Boyles turns it over. But twice they didn't get anything out of it. Murray Boyles defending Dante. And this South Carolina team, primarily man-to-man, -man, they may throw some zone out, too. Very physical defensive team. Evans with a tough two. The freshman from Baltimore. This kid has gotten better and better as the year's going on. He's averaging seven and a half, five rebounds a game. And he can shoot the three. And South Carolina stepped out, so a slow start for the Gamecocks. You know, you get stuck in the corner here. That's the perfect time to trap somebody. Back-to-back -back turnovers for South Carolina. Zachary Davis right on Jermaine Kuznar. He's their best on-ball defender. And a five-second call against the Ducks. You rarely see that anymore because yeah. all he's got to do is bounce it once and he gets a lot he gets a, he gets another count Watch live men's games on your computer phone tablet or streaming device with NCAA March Madness live Download now to stay up to date on all the action You know Dane Altman is one of these guys that he loves changing defenses Some people love to go straight man to man. He's got a mixed bag of things each team has turned it over twice in the first three minutes. Talon Cooper almost turned it over again. Here is Mack connecting B.J. Mack. Now that's one thing that Oregon's got to watch out for because they've gotten the ball to Mack in that perfect spot three times. They only scored that one, though. Dante had a career-high 25 in the Pac-12 championship game as Shellstad misses the three. Now they're back man-to-man. -man. Here's Mack from the outside. He can do it from there as well. Dangerous guy. Kwame Evans is going to have to chase him around. When they play their best, he is making threes. Mack has all five points for South Carolina. Inside, Dante with the field goal and the foul. You see B.J. Mack here. Kwame Evans a little bit too far away from him. Thought he had to help. 
And then on the other side, in Folly Dante, who, like I said, 43 of his last 49, now 44 of his last 50 field goals. Foul is on B.J. Mack. Dante has had injury troubles throughout his career. This season, he missed 14 games after having surgery on his knee, returned in mid-January, and ever since he's been back, he has been absolutely on fire for the Ducks, the Pac-12 tournament most outstanding player. Josh Gray is substituted in for the Gamecocks. They'll go about 11 deep. Gray with the offensive rebound. Out to Cooper. And that's what Gray does. He's tough. He plays about 10 minutes a game, but he really helps them on the offensive glass. Shellstad on the attack. Lost the ball. And a turnover by the Ducks. Timeout on the floor for the championship. Dana Altman's Ducks out to a two-point lead. Winner will take on Creighton in Saturday's second round. Murray Boyles in the paint, rejected by Dante, but they're going to call a goal 10. So count the bucket. Murray Boyles. Wow, that's close. Close. I don't know, man. That, I, I'll be honest with you. If I'm uh, Dana Altman, I'm asking them to look at it. They didn't. I'm surprised. Cario Oquendo has entered for the Ducks. Again, only eight healthy scholarship players for Oregon. Kuznar had it knocked away. Great defense by Davis. Davis is a really good defender. Good pass to Talon Cooper. That was Jacoby Wright dishing and Cooper finishing. A 9-2 run for the Gamecocks. Well, Zachary Davis is built like a good defender. Oh. Dante out of bounds. Nice block there. Zachary Davis, a tremendous defender. And then Jacoby Wright. To Talon Cooper. Early on, Oregon with more turnovers than field goals. 4-3. to three. Back to the zone. And you see these guys are pointing, talking. Good job of matching up there. Miles Studi on the floor. He's got the ball here. He has been sidelined with a hip injury, feeling a little bit better, but he turns it over. Yeah, and I think up ahead of the pack, Shellstad, no call, a lot of contact, South Carolina ball. Now South Carolina has their small team in. Davis for three. They got their small team at all. Davis just waiting for that. Steal in the bucket. He was just hanging around. Oregon got really careless there. But I was saying, South Carolina's got their small team in the game where B.J. Mack is their five man. And a foul away from the ball against South Carolina. But how about the defensive intensity of Davis? Well, he just hangs around. You see here, he's going to hang around just for a second. And then he just sneaks in there and is able to make the layup. Davis commits the foul, and he comes out of the game. Lamont Paris will rotate guys in and out throughout. So far, we've had a combined nine turnovers and eight field goals, and there's another turnover. And you know, they're number one in the pack in fewest turnovers. Mack misses the three. Oregon already has... Seven turnovers these to go along only, with their seven points. These teams only average ten each. Dante up for two. Strong move. Yeah, Oregon had three turnovers in the Pac-12 championship game. Yeah, neither one of these teams turned it over. That's bad defense. And Jacoby Wright makes him pay. When you give the you give the baseline like that, it's a problem. You know, when you play that matchup zone, when you got a guy, you got to be playing him man to man, and you got to be in a stance and not let him drive it on you. Kuznard quiet early. Got the ball here, defended by Michi Johnson. Kuznard spinning on Johnson, goes off glass for two. Kuznard's tough. He shot a lot of free throws this year. He's a very physical kid who could really drive it. 
Oregon is five of seven to start. The turnovers have been the problem. There's another drive. And on the drive, it's Shellstad who commits the foul. See, the key to that defense being effective, besides the fact you have to talk a lot and you would just cutters and switch guys off, you've got to make sure that you stay in your stand to stop the dribble. All new Tournament of Champions, Sundays at 8 p.m. on Food Network. You know, a lot of times people think in a zone, that in the zone, you still got to guard a guy when he's in your area. Dante on the bench, and an offensive foul is called against South Carolina. That's on Michi Johnson, his first. Lamont Paris, the SEC Coach of the Year. As you see Michi getting a piece of Oquendo. Oquendo nearly traveled. And now shows to add the talented freshman. I'll tell you one thing, there's no drop coverage for South Carolina. They head screens, pick and rolls really hard. Shot clock at four, Shellstad deep three, no. Half court defense. South Carolina's been really good all year. Mack lowers his shoulder, but too strong off the glass, and a big rebound by Diawara. That's what I call a hedge. <laughs> B.J. Mack chased Shellstad to half court. Once again, the shot clock winding down for the Ducks. Brennan Rigsby with five. Rigsby drives high off the glass for two. He's been very good off the bench. He's a good three-point shooter. Like you said, only eight guys. They all got to do it. Here's that trap again. Rigsby averaging six points per game. Johnson rejected by Rigsby. So Rigsby providing a spark off the bench early. Good job by B.J. Mack. I'd say he's really good on those pick and rolls. He's got really good feet. In the corner of three, not there for Oquendo, and Mack the rebound. Oregon without an offensive rebound so far in this game. Right, in tight, no. And South Carolina, another chance with Mack. And Shellstad goes up, tries to throw it off Studi. Studi picks it up. Studi is fouled. Great job by Miles Studi. How long did it take for that break to come? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was... Studi misses the second. The tip not there, and it's grabbed by Oquendo. And then we have a foul behind the play committed by Zachary Davis. And that's going to be number two on Davis. So a big foul there against the sophomore. Yeah, that's a bad one to get. And Lamont Paris is keeping him on the court with 9.50 to go in the first half. I'm surprised at that. So far, good balance for the Ducks. Six field goals by five different players. I would think he's got to come out for five minutes. Oquendo oh, in the paint. Turn around. No. Rebound, Dante. First offensive rebound for the Ducks. Dante can't spin it in, but he draws the foul. Great job on the offensive glass. And Folly Dante. Studi commits the foul, sending Dante to the line. 60% on the year. You can get complete cover. BJ Mack has taken seven of the Gamecocks' 16 shots, but he just goes to the bench, and Murray Boyles is back on the floor. Back to the zone. Nope, they showed the zone, they went through. So now they're switching. And tell you what, Dane Allman, he's got a whole bag of tricks.
Here is Wright for three. Yes, Jacoby Wright, who over his last four games was 0 of 6 from deep, knocks that one down. And he had a four three-point game against Kentucky where he had 14 points. Kuznard shooting over Davis, front of the rim, and Davis the rebound. Johnson. Now Michi Johnson for three. That's good for Michi. His team leading 57-3, and the Gamecocks have their largest lead of the first half. Already three threes for South Carolina. They shoot a high number of threes. Kuznar trying to answer, and he does. The former Gamecock knocking down the triple. Leads the team in three-pointers this year with 63. Davis left alone. Now drives at Dante. Wow, what a great job by a big kid getting to that baseline. That was tremendous defense that time on the baseline. Created the turnover. Five on four. Kuznar oh. connects. That was a tough, tough finish. I'll tell you, Dante can move his feet for a big guy. Again. And taken away. And then Michi Johnson commits the foul. His second foul. So Johnson and Davis both with two fouls. Michi is still out there as Dante on cue with Dana Altman just told Evan. Scores. I think that's tough to keep him out there now. He's so important to this team. He gets his third. It's going to be a problem. And now Oregon back in the zone. They communicate really well. Look at Kwame Evans is out here now. Michi rejected by Evans. I'll tell you, they're big guys. Dante and Evans, those guys are moving their feet. He was guarding Michi Johnson. There was the fastest guy South Carolina has, and he was able to stay with him off the dribble. That's what makes this zone so effective, is those big guys can stay with perimeter guys when they end up with them. Studi for three, and he's fouled shooting the three by Evans. So it'll be three shots for Miles Studi. Yeah, I mean, that's always a bad foul, obviously. Studi is a really good three-point shooter that time, but you got to give him his space to land. And you see Kwame Evans here doesn't allow him to land in his space. That is a good call. After South Carolina went up by six, Oregon has scored the last seven points. Uh, Studi, a 69% free throw shooter at the line. The Bleacher Report app to watch now. Studi did not play in the SEC quarterfinals because of a hip injury, but he did practice on Tuesday, and Lamont Paris said he's not 100%, but good enough to be out there. As he goes two out of three at the line. Josh Gray back in for Studi. Twenty six wins for South Carolina this season that ties a school record from their 2017 final 14. Kuznard will take that three. And Johnson comes away with the rebound wants to run. Johnson on the break all the way tried to leave it for Gray. And it was last touched by Oregon. I tell you, Oregon's got to get Dante, I think, a touchdown. Like, like uh, uh, Dane Altman told Evan, got to get him more touches. South Carolina has eight points off its bench already in the first half. Wright trying to add to that total. He cannot. And Dante the rebound. 
Dante is three for three for seven points. He's got to get to that low block. Right? He's got Josh Gray on him, which is a better matchup for South Carolina because of his size. Oregon, the early turnover trouble, but no turnovers now in the last eight minutes. There's a battle going on in that low post right now. And Shot. here comes the double. Shot clock at three. Shellstad, 4 3. And Gray is fouled by Tracy. Tracy comes over and says, Sorry, it was up high on that one. And that was pretty good offense by Oregon. They had the double on Dante down low. They swung it to the other side, got an open three. Yeah, nothing there. It's a common foul. Talon Cooper brings it up. He played through an ankle injury in the SEC quarterfinal loss, but Coach Paris telling us yesterday is just about back to 100%. Nobody's 100% this time of year. Not even Coach Lapis. <laughs> Three for Michi is no good. And Tracy the rebound. I'm 150% right now. How about now. that? Kuznard, yes. He makes tough tough shots. The guy has taken a ton of free throws this year, 150 of them. At his size, he's aggressive going to the basket. He leads all scorers with nine points. It's a 9-2 run for the Ducks with four and a half to play. Murray Boyles with the shot clock winding down. Working on Dante. Murray Boyles hands off for Wright. Has the shot clock. Will they count that? They're going to take a look. Yeah, they got to take a look at that. I don't think it was good. Another look. I don't think no. so. I don't think that's going to count. So they continue to look at this to see if the basket counts. And they've had none since. But I'll tell you what, half-court defense, got like a chess match going on between this uh, matchup zone that's tough to beat. Now you have a 1-3-1 one -one by South Carolina. A lot of changing defenses in this game. Dante draws the double. Great pass. In the corner, Tracy for three. 36% from deep. That's tops on the team. I tell you, and Fale Dante's got a great feel for the game, too, because that's where you want to pass that ball that led to that three-point shot. Davis can't answer. It's a 12-2 run for the Ducks. Kuznard, and he draws the foul, count the bucket. How did Kuznard get that one to go? Well, let's take a look at this three-point shot first that came off this tremendous bad fight. Look at Dante. He sees the opposite side of the court, which is so important, and he throws a bullet there. Now they got to close out hard, reverse the ball to Tracy, get the three-point shot. That was a look from our AT&T connected cam, and then Kuznard somehow gets this one to drop. He's already in double figures with 11 points. I tell you, this Mfali Dante, is very, I'm impressed by him a lot seeing him live. Over to Evan. Well, Andrew, you touched on the connection to South Carolina for Kuznar, but he's also exhibiting some toughness. You see that tape on the left shoulder suffered an injury on March 9th, and he's playing through pain, guys. It's that simple. It hurts every day, and he's playing through it. Yeah, this is the time of year. You don't want to miss a game like this. See, so this starts out zone, ends up switching. Now it's man-to-man. -man. I think you got to run your man-to-man -man offense against this defense. And a foul with just three on the shot clock. 
South Carolina really struggling over five minutes without a field goal. The foul was on Evans. That's his second. So he's going to come out and Oquendo comes back in. Yeah, they're really struggling with this defense. Not getting enough movement. And Oregon is doing a great job. Kuznar poked that one away. Murray Boyle saves it to Cooper. Another miss. Oquendo right at right. And an offensive foul. You know, he almost had one of those earlier in the game, and he ended up finishing it for a layup. Here, Jacoby Ryman I mean, just tries to go right through him. That is a charge. Yeah, here in Pittsburgh, that looked like Jerome Bettis <laughs> yeah. knocking over a defender at the line. Isn't he the bus? The bus. Very good, lap. <laughs> the Pittsburgh knowledge. I get him right once in a while. <laughs> No, but this defense has been perplexing. Now they show a two-man front. Sometimes they show a one-man front. Sometimes they show this and they go man-to-man. -man. So, you know, Dane Altman has got a whole lot of things in his bag. That was the Ducks' first turnover in the last 10 minutes and 50 seconds. And great defense again by Oregon. Yeah, Jadrian Tracy wasn't giving up any ground, but he had him follow Dante behind. Oh, what a deep position there. And Murray Boyles commits the foul before the shot. You want to call it, you want to see a deep duck in by a 6'11 guy with a 9'5 standing reach? You can't get any deeper than this. <laughs> That's deep. You do that on purpose, a deep duck in? Deep ducking, yeah. You like that? D -D Ducks. Alliteration. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I, thought, I thought it was a DD. See that? You enough. pointed something out I should have seen. I thought you did her. that on purpose. You should have no. said you did that on purpose. You know what? You give me too much credit. <laughs> Love movies? You're in luck because Max gets movies. Lots of them. Award-winning dramas, epic adventures, family favorites, and more. Stream now on Max, the one to watch for movies. You know, you're much quicker than me. Boy. See, now they even show the duck. I, I, why didn't I get that? I should have just agreed. Yeah, of course that's why I didn't. I even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Our great team here in Pittsburgh. Producer Jonathan Siegel, director Andy Goldberg, statistician Ethan Cooperson. Great to be with you as it's a 16-2 run for Oregon. And they will run it. Oh, that's a great move. Kuznar. What a first half. Tough, tough player off the dribble. He averages 15 points per game. He's got 14 in the first half. I think these guys need a timeout. And they're not getting any movement. Oh, oh. bailed out by a foul call. Oh. Called on Shellstad. Kuzinar is so strong. He could take a shot. Doesn't bother him at all. That's the second on the freshman Shellstad. So he comes out with 134 to go. And Murray Boyles at the line. Murray Boyles really had an impressive freshman season. A member of the SEC all-freshman team. He missed the first six games of the year with Mono. And during that time... He lost close to 25 pounds, so it took him some while, a while to get back in the swing of things, put the weight back on, and now he's playing some great basketball. Yeah, but he's in an 11-game stretch right now, Andrew. He's averaging almost 17 and 8 rebounds a game. He's been terrific. He's struggling today. I think the size of Evans and Dante, he's a 6'7 post player right now, even though Lamont Paris told us, Next year, you will see this kid stepping out and making jump shots, too. But right now, he's an inside player. Not an easy game to score inside with the size of Oregon. Even though right now, Oregon's got a small team in the game. Just Dante. Well, you're never small when he's in the <laughs> game, I guess. Guess who they go to. Dante down low. Oh, a rare miss. His first of the day. His first since the Pac-12 semifinals against <laughs> Arizona. And he switches on to a guard. And a foul inside. That'll send Davis to the line. You know, I had them earlier in the year against your alma mater. Syracuse. And, uh, you know, they weren't, Dante didn't play in that game. Well, that's a definite foul. Dante didn't play in that game. And so the first thing that I said, hey, Dana, when I saw him here, I said, how's it going? He said, number one. <laughs> I said, yeah, it makes a big difference, number one. A little bit. <laughs>
That was the second foul on Tracy as Davis rattles that one in. Davis made the game-winning layup at Texas A&M in late February. Had a career-high 16 points in that one. And Dana Altman calls timeout. He does a good job, and I've been more impressed even with his passing and his ability to move his feet and guard perimeter players. Over the last seven and a half minutes, South Carolina's without a field goal, but they're six of seven from the line. That's really what's kept them in this first half, and a travel against the Ducks. Yeah, that time South Carolina brought the help at the right time, forcing Dante to travel. Dana Altman's team shooting 59%. South Carolina just 31%, but again, it's a six-point game. Because they're going to play their pace, which it is, they're not going to beat themselves, which they're not. They just can't make a shot right now, but their defense keeps them in the game. And it's a 14-second difference between the game clock and shot clock. But they have to talk at halftime about how they're going to attack this defense. See, this standing around is not going to help. That time they fell as, oh, that was goaltending. I thought it was goaltending also. I think the Ducks got away with one there. And while I'm surprised Lamont Paris isn't saying anything. There's a one-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Yeah, they can't look at it now because they didn't make a call. Kuznar trying to get around Davis. Into the corner it goes. Shellstad. Shellstad step back. Yes! They're calling that a two at the buzzer. Whoa! You betcha! Cooper walks it off. Hanging with Mr. Cooper as the horn sounds in Pittsburgh. That's one way to end an eight minute and 22 <laughs> second drought. Get a scoop from a little deeper. They are taking a look just to make sure. That's a way to break a drought. The officials are still huddled up at the monitor. <laughs> Evan is with Coach Altman. Well, Coach, when a half ends that way, how does it impact your message to the guys? It doesn't. You know, it was a big shot. You know, a little momentum for them, but... We played a good first half. Our defense was pretty solid. Just too many turnovers. Missed some free throws that would hurt, would have helped us. So we played pretty good. Just uh, I'd like to see an eight-point lead, but, you know, they're going to hit some shots. That's just one of them. Yeah, Coach Lapis is pretty impressed how many different defenses you're throwing at them in that first half. What's been the approach on that side? Well, we've sat back. We, we haven't trapped as much as we usually do just simply because of our numbers. But um, the guys have done a pretty good job rotating. Dante's a presence in there. So all in all, they've done a pretty good job. Coach, appreciate you. you bet. I worked for Roley Massimino as one of the great matchup zone coaches ever. And uh, I can tell you, when they ran their man stuff, it was harder to match up. Evan, what did Lamont Paris have to say? Movement was the word. More body movement than ball movement, guys. He wants more cutting. He feels like that'll generate the offense. Again, body movement, cutting. And, and Coach, this one struck me. Move away from the ball, and the ball will find you. Interesting. You know, yeah, I think that what he wants, and it's the truth. Just moving the ball against this defense is not enough. People have to move because that makes it harder to match up with them. Murray Boyles committed the foul, his second, just seven seconds into the second half. Kuznard at 14 in the first half. On the attack here. Not this time, but he tips it in. He's just so strong. All Pac-12 second team and playing like it today. And no surprise that Dana Altman is going to stick with this. Look how they're matched up. I mean, what Kuzinar did there was tremendous. Max still can't get one to drop. Five points on two of eight shooting for B.J. Mack. Dante 
Nice fake and then goes up and scores. Move. You know, he didn't see that ball coming till very late. He had his back to the ball. Then he turned around, the ball was there, and he was able to haul it in. For a big guy, not an easy play. Ten points for Dante. Murray Boyles bounces one to Cooper. Nice pass from the freshman Murray Boyles. Seven-point game. Winner will take on Creighton in Saturday's second round. So you could have Dana Altman going against his old school if the Ducks are to win this one. Shot clock at six. Evans on the perimeter. Now drives in and rejected by Murray Boyles. Shot clock at three. Great block. Ducks have to get one up quickly. Dante will. Oh, how about the soft touch from Dante? And you know, B.J. Mack, he wanted to dive to the basket. B.J. Mack wouldn't let him get there. He got physical whoops. All right, I'll go to 12 feet. And he knocks it out. A dozen for Dante. I'd like to see them screen some of these guys on the top of that zone. Dante, the rejection. That is the fifth block today for the Ducks. And a good job by Kwame Evans walling up on that. Jumping, leaving his feet, and walling up. Really good. That's what coaches have to teach nowadays because secondary defender charges have disappeared from the game. Cooper, another three. And Davis. That one went out of bounds. Gray back in for B.J. Mack, who still can't find a rhythm out there for Lamont Paris's team. Double pick and roll here. Tracy on the baseline. Dante, the offensive board. Missed the putback, but he's fouled. Second offensive rebound for Dante. And four as a team for the Ducks. And that time, Josh Gray didn't do a good job of boxing him out. As a matter of fact, Dante had the position on him. But they get Zach Davis for the foul, and that's his third. But Dante at the line. Talking to Lamont Paris about Infali Dante yesterday, and he said not only is he powerful, but he's agile. We have to affect his rhythm. I haven't done a good job of that so far today. No, he's uh, he's doing it all. You know, he's a pretty strong guy, too. It's not like he's thin. He's got wide shoulders. A 9-5 standing reach. Shellstad, steal, and lay in. He fell asleep. A 10-point Oregon advantage. Davis taken away by Dante. See, this defense becomes even more effective, Andrew, when you got a guy like that who stands in the middle. He can erase mistakes. You make some mistakes, but he's out there erasing them. Six steals for the Ducks. They average better than seven per game. Their defense has turned it up to start the second half. And with no pressure, they're making steals. They're just getting South Carolina to throw the ball to them. Shot clock winding down. Shellstad. Over to Kuznar, puts up a three. <laughs> and, you know, this this defense has really stopped Michi Johnson big time. And a foul down low. <laughs> That's the first foul committed by Dante. Took a nasty fall on his back during the Pac-12 semifinals against Arizona. And the last thing that Oregon fans wanted to see with all the injuries he's had to overcome throughout his career. But he was able to get back in the game. 
And then in the Pac-12 championship game went 12 out of 12 for 25 points. And you know, Andrew, in that game against Arizona, they were down 14, and they don't have a lot of guys, and they were able to come back against Arizona to win that game in the 70s. Murray Boyles comes up empty at the free throw line. He's had a rough day so far. Only four points for the freshman. He averages better than 10 per game. There's the lob. Dante's Inferno! I tell you, you don't have to throw a great pass. You have to throw as high as you can. <laughs> 16 points, six rebounds, two steals, and a block for Dante. Johnson, that's a deep three, is good for Michi. And South Carolina needed that one bad. I mean, and you got to feel for Dante. I mean, he was hurt his whole career. Kuznar, another tough two into the Oregon cheerleaders. Yeah, a little too easy that time. Lamont Paris cannot be happy with that. Cooper. Oh, Tracy closes out quickly. Great closeout, Andrew. Took the words right out of line. You said it too fast for me. Cooper to the hoop. Rejected by Dante. His second block. Kuznar, transition three is good! Of eight points, Kuznar, the three right before the timeout called by Lamont Paris. We thought maybe the half-court buzzer beater by Cooper would give the Gamecocks some momentum. Has not played out that way here in the second half. Well, one thing, Andrew, you're playing against this defense and you're getting nothing in the lane. Dante is like, you can't get anything in there. Another three for Kuznar. He's got 24 points. And he's a kind of a streaky three-point shooter. He's shooting like 31% on the season. Yeah, the big problem is they can't get anything in the lane in this game. Right, lost it in the paint. Another steal by the Ducks. South Carolina has 10 points in the paint. Oregon has 24. And a lot of it is because, as Dane Altman said, number one. Number one is Dante. They throw it to him here. What a catch. Oh, man, and he's fouled. What a catch. Ooh, and he's oh, grabbing his up. right hand. His teammates help him up. And he's flexing out that right hand as Gray commits his second foul. Hopefully Dante is okay. Located right around the corner. We'll now see the Illini in the second round. Dante seems to be okay after he grabbed his right hand after that fall. Evan, you have more? Yeah, always a good sign, guys, when you can take a hard high five from your teammates in the huddle there on that right hand. But you touched on his injury history. Multiple knee surgeries early in his career could have derailed his career. Remember, he missed that Sweet 16 run in 2021, and he said this week that is a real motivator to be a part of a run here in Oregon. Dante and Kuznard have 19 of Oregon's 21 points here in the second half as Michi hits another. Yeah, Michi's hit three threes in this game. Johnson has nine points, a 15-point game. B.J. Mack still on the bench for the Gamecocks. My guess is that Coach... Lamont Paris likes Josh Gray on Dante. My guess is that Gamecocks fans are not happy that Kuznard left South Carolina to <laughs> yeah. go to Oregon. That's not a guess. 26 points today. Mack is at the scores table. Kuznard has 10 points in the last three minutes. Here's Gray. And a blocking foul. And now Dante is down again. What is it? Again, he's... Appears to be holding that right wrist. Now he's holding his neck. And Dana Altman is on the court wondering if he should come out and check on Dante. He's asking to go out. You know, you just worry about this kid because he's been hurt so much in his career. 
Gray right oh, yeah. to his to the bowl yeah. right in the chin. Looks like Dante's going to get a break as Mohamedou Diawara is coming in for Dante. Another look. Dante was called for the foul. Seems to be smiling as he heads off as Gray misses the free throw. A lot of hand checking. Kuznard out to the perimeter. Rigsby thought about a three with 10 to shoot. Kuznard. Not this time. Johnson drives, draws the foul, count the bucket. So Michi Johnson is trying to give the Gamecocks some energy. He's a defensive genius with zones. He used to have zone rules. Rule, rule number 10 was beat the zone down the floor. The last two possessions, South Carolina pushed the ball, which they don't do often, and got down before they were able to get matched up. That's not a bad thing to do. Push the ball up the floor before the defense gets set. Dante and Mack are both back out there for their respective teams battling in the paint right now. Five to shoot. Looks like South Carolina picked it up a notch here. Shellstad puts up a two. <laughs> And the offensive rebound to Evans, who's fouled. And all the Gamecocks just stood around there watching. That's a frustrating possession because they played great defense the entire possession, but did not finish it off by getting the defensive rebound, which they normally are very, very good at. Just missed the box out. Miles Studi, has got to get him out there. Mack commits his second foul. Still just five points for B.J. Mack. Zachary Davis comes back in. And Michi Johnson to the bench. They're going with their small team now. Should be a harder team to play matchup zone against. Should be. Nine minutes gone by in the second half. Here is Zachary Davis for two. And that's the other thing. Now they, you got to get a little dribble penetration. That time, Talon Cooper drove the baseline. The defense has to rotate, end up getting a layup. Well, this year, South Carolina has 23 come-from-behind wins. Tied for the most in the country with UConn. 12 times they've done it in the second half. So they have been down this road before. And a foul is called against Oregon. That was a bad shot by Kuznard there. Foul is on Evans of the Ducks, and that's his third. Mack for three. It's good for B.J. Mack. His first points in the last 26 minutes. That time they screened the zone what they hadn't been doing. Mack screened and stepped out and was wide open. It's Maybe eight, they found something. Yeah, it's an 8-2 run for the Gamecocks. And a foul committed by South Carolina. All right, take a look here. Watch B.J. Mack. Mac is going to set a screen and then step out. And you got to screen. You got to run like man to man stuff against this matchup. Now he's wide open because Dante was to help. Wide open shot. So maybe they're starting to solve something against this defense. Foul was on Mac, his third. Kuznar, another triple. This guy. He's got four threes today and 29 points. Career high was set earlier this year against Arizona. Got it again. 39 in that game. Mack is fouled.
Cousinard, I mean, they're not even close to him. He's made enough in this game. And then down the other end, they ran that screen again. B.J. Mack popped out. Dante tried to close out hard. He couldn't, and he was able to drive by and get two foul shots. He got to play, run man stuff against that defense. Foul is on Dante. That's his third with 9.40 to play. They don't have to take him out. He's not a guy that fouls a lot. Over the last three games, B.J. Mack is 17 for 17 at the free throw line. A 12-point game. Dante calling for it, gets it, and is fouled. It's hard for a guy that big to see the floor that much. He's been down, down the last three times on the floor. And that's the fourth on B.J. Mack. So his tough day continues. He's got to come out for at least a little bit. And Lamont Paris is going deep into his bench to bring in Benjamin Bozeman's Verdonk. Just his 17th game of the year. What a story this young man is. He's a second-year law school student at South Carolina. Believed to be one of the only Division I law school students. Yeah, I, I'm sure. Matt committed three fouls in the last one minute and 50 seconds. There's Bozeman's for Dunk. Michi in the paint, hangs and hits. He has been a spark here in the second half. They're starting to attack this defense off the dribble a little bit more. First game for Bozeman's for Dunk since Valentine's Day. Give you an idea of how deep Lamont Paris is going. Evans spinning. Nice, nice. pass to Dante. You know, Kwame Evans was a McDonald's All-American. This kid is going to be a good player. Won a national title two years ago at Montverde Academy. Corner three, not there. Knocked out of bounds to Oregon. How about the dish from Kwame Evans? That's a big kid making a beautiful spin dribble move. Drawing all the help. And Dante with the finish. 20 points for Dante to go with six rebounds, two blocks, and two steals. Kuznard and Dante have combined for 19 field goals. South Carolina as a team has 17. They need to throw it to him. They do. Dante going to work. Michi Johnson comes over, commits the foul. It'll be two free throws for Dante. He's a tough guard, I'll tell you. Because he's got good hands, really good feet. I always say that about big guys. Hands and feet. He's got both. Steps through. You have to follow. Oregon will be shooting free throws the rest of the way as Dante connects. Kuznard, who's had a huge day, comes out. Tracy back in. Kuznard with 29 points, 5 assists. And this kid's taking his 12th free throw. And Dante's going to come out as well for Diawara. The transfer from Stetson. Perfect time to take him out. The under 8's coming. Got a 15-point lead. Michi can't get this one to go, but he steals it right back. Johnson from the free throw line. And that one's good. Michi Johnson has 15 points with his dad in attendance. 12 of the 15 have come after halftime for Johnson. Oregon not in a rush with 7.20 to play. Rigsby for three.
Johnson, three. Ah, this time a little short. It comes all the way back out to Johnson. And Tracy out of bounds. It'll be South Carolina ball. <laughs> Only three Ducks have ever scored 30 points in an NCAA tournament game. To Juan Porter, Frederick Jones, and Joe Young. Kuznard trying to join them. He's got 29 with 6.58 to play. I thought maybe I, maybe I could sneak a lease out of it or something. <laughs> Kuznard, who spent his first four years in his career playing for the Gamecocks. Only two of his teammates remain. That's Josh Gray and Jacoby Wright. He says they still text each other, but as soon as the bracket came out on Sunday, no more texts until this one was over. <laughs> Cooper, corner three is good. See, 13 that, for Cooper. That time, they did not play the screen the right way. They went all under it, and he was able to bury the three. The ninth of the afternoon for South Carolina. Bate gets the double. Kuznard. He's got 32. Wow. The fourth duck to score at least 30 in an NCAA tournament game. And they rotated to him. They just didn't get out fast enough. Murray Boyles. He didn't want any part of Dante there. Johnson to Murray Boyles. A lot of traffic down low. And it's taken off the glass by the freshman Evans. Kuznard working on Cooper. Kuznard, great defense by Cooper. Rips it away. A tie-up is called. That's our first tie-up of the whole day. How about that? <laughs> Going back to the first game, too. It'll be South Carolina basketball. South Carolina has missed 10 layups in this game, and a lot of that is the presence of Dante. No doubt. Hey, we saw in the first game, Akron missed a bunch of layups, too, because Kalkbrenner was out there. Creighton awaits the winner of this game. Murray Boyles, tough shot for two. But just six points for the talented freshman. If you're Oregon, you got to keep attacking here. Good time to get the big fella a touch. They do. Lost it, gets it back. And a foul committed by Michi Johnson. And that's going to be his fourth foul. Yep. And Lamont Paris is keeping Johnson on the floor with four, and he puts B.J. Mack back in with four fouls. Now or never. Team high, 15 points for Michi. The junior from Cleveland who has so many... Family and friends in attendance. Short drive from Cleveland. Kuznard with 33. That ties the NCAA tournament record for an Oregon player. If it was a two-point game, he'd have both of them out. 12 points, stay in. And no Oregon Tuck has ever scored more points in an NCAA tournament game than Jermaine Kuznar today. 34 for the senior. It's the three-point shooting that has been unbelievable. The driving he does all the time. Layup. With Cooper connecting. Long way to go in this game. But I think South Carolina, they got to pick up the pace a little bit more. Kuznar, nice dish. Evans, the jam. What a find by Kuznar. He was explosive driving. The help came, which was off of Evans, and he gets a dunk. 
Michis rejected, but a foul is called on Evans. Evans thought he got all ball. We'll take a look at Kuznard here. He gets by Cooper. They come and help, but Studi comes to help, but nobody helps him. Sixth assist for Kuznard. And the foul. Oh, the foul. Says, yeah, Evans got him on the follow through. That's his fourth foul. Lap, we've talked a lot about Oregon only having eight healthy scholarship players, but you were a coach that didn't like to go much more than eight anyway. If you've got eight, you're good. Now, you got to be have eight healthy guys, and they're good players. That's plenty. I didn't like having 13, to be honest with you. I think it's hard on your chemistry. they got great chemistry now, Oregon. These eight guys know they're going to play. I think it makes a huge difference. I know coaches say, I only have eight guys. That's all you need. Yeah. <laughs> South Carolina has 11 guys, but they trail by 12. And you know, Andrew, especially the style they play defensively. You know, you're playing that kind of matchup zone. Oregon this half, 13 field goals and just one turnover. Well, Dana Altman talked about that a lot at halftime. And as you said, three turnovers last week in the Pac-12 championship game against Colorado. We've done a good job here at the free throw line in the second half as well. 10 out of 12 with Evans standing there with two more coming. 78% on the season. You know, this kid's only a freshman. He's going to be pretty good. Dana Altman was asked about his approach to the NCAA tournament this year with a few new faces. In fact, really no tournament experience to speak of on this Ducks roster in terms of guys who have played in games. And he said, I want them to enjoy it. He took a bit of a different approach this year, making sure they kind of soaked in the moment after winning the Pac-12 championship game. But it's been all business today for the Ducks. Mac for three. It's good. Two timeouts left for South Carolina. Oregon has three. I mean, and the thing is, they start two freshmen. Kuznar draws the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line. Cooper commits his first foul with 3.09 left. <laughs> 35 now for Jermaine Kuznar, the native of East Chicago, Indiana. A lot of good players came out of there. I had one in Villanova. Ricky Wright that was from there. Good player. Gamecocks got to go. Here is Studi for three. Not there. And it is saved by Kuznar. And now the Ducks can use a little clock. Dane Altman says let's cross and then use the clock. And here's where having the big guy is so important. You use the clock and five seconds to go, you throw it to the box. It's pretty simple. Or you throw it to him. Oh, that. <laughs> Dante catches it. And good defense there by South Carolina. Approaching two and a half to play. And a bad turnover by the Gamecocks. B.J. Mack, bad pass. 11 turnovers today for South Carolina. And a timeout called by Kuznard, who got trapped with eight seconds on the shot clock and win the last Pac-12 tournament. And they did just that, beating UCLA, Arizona, and Colorado in succession. Yeah, they were not in. One of the bid stealers that 
took away so many spots over the last weekend of college basketball. One of the five bid stealers. Oregon only has one turnover this half. Whatever Dana told him at halftime, should bottle it. And this free throw for Kuznard is to give him 40 points in the game. 40. How about it? Kuznard goes for 40 against South Carolina. Dante had the rebound, lost it. Up ahead, Tracy. Tracy's going to pull it back. Good job. Good sportsmanship there. And what a performance by the Oregon Ducks. And now, a matchup on Saturday between Dana Altman and Greg McDermott of Creighton. Should be a good one. The former Blue Jays coach against the current one. The Ducks, 87, Gamecocks, 73. South Carolina finishes the year with 26 wins that ties a school record.